you probably heard about e or pi. You might have even heard about e plus pi or e times pi. But did you ever hear somebody mention e divided by pi? It's actually related to a very classic linear algebra problem. Linear algebra? I hate linear algebra! It bricks! A brick is thrown through a window. Guys, we don't need to get all up in arms in here. This is a very simple one. Let's look at the subset of real number defined as so. So A is the subset of all linear combination of pi and e with rational coefficients. By the way, a linear combination is this sort of sum where you can put coefficients in front. More precisely, we say that B is a linear combination of A1 to AN over Q if there exists coefficients in Q such that such that you can write B in the following way. Now A is a vector space over Q, which means for our discussion that A satisfies two properties. One, the sum of any two elements in our set A belongs to A. And two, if we take any number in our set A and multiply it by a rational number, the result will also be in A. Now, when it comes to vector spaces, we can talk about the dimension of the space, which basically means how many elements does it take to specify uniquely all the other elements as a linear combination of those elements. So for our space A, Definitionally, all elements could be written as a linear combination of pi and e, but is it a unique combination? Maybe there's a number d which could be written as a linear combination of pi and e in two different ways. Well, if that scenario was true, we will be able to conclude that pi over e could be written using a1, a2, b1, and b2. And since a1, a2, b1, and b2 are all rational, we conclude that e over pi is rational. And it turns out the opposite deduction is also true. If e over pi was a rational number, then we could deduce that the following equation is true, which means that 0 could be written as a linear combination of pi and e in two different ways. We basically showed here that the dimension of A is closely related to E over pi. Extremely related, actually. We showed that A has dimension 2 if and only if E over pi is irrational, which I'm pretty sure is an open problem. Another interesting fact is that E plus pi and E divided by pi can't both be rational. That is, one of them must be rational. I'll prove it quickly. Let's erroneously assume that e plus pi and e divided by pi are both rational. The assumption that e divided by pi is rational leads us to conclude that e and pi are linearly dependent in Q, which means there exists a rational number lambda such that lambda times e is equal to pi. Now, due to the assumption that e plus pi is rational, we can say that it is equal to some rational number lambda 2. Now, if we combine both of the equations, we can conclude that that e is equal to lambda 2 over 1 plus lambda 1. And because lambda 2 and lambda 1 are both rational, we can conclude that lambda 2 over 1 plus lambda 1 is also rational, which means that e is rational. Contradiction. The only rational explanation is that at least one of them is irrational. Interestingly enough, you can expand this idea and also show that the set e plus pi, e divided by pi, and e times pi has at most one rational number. You do this by showing that each pair of numbers in the set has at most one rational number. We did one of the pairs. And the two remaining pairs aren't too difficult. The e plus pi, e times pi pair is a classic result, and I will leave a video in the description. And the e divided by e times pi pair, I will leave as an exercise.